and we are back what up everybody it's me oh dear aka the o review and welcome back to the oh dear podcast this is your host oh dear herrera and let me just start by saying happy new year 2024 and as i'm recording this on january 2nd i'm back from a long long vacation and i gotta say it sucks being back in the state not gonna lie it's that feeling knowing that you've been on vacation for so long and now you got to go back to the real world. It's a big deal towards now it's a new year. Can't wait to do whatever wonders I can in 2024. And it's been a shitty year for me in 2023, to be honest with you. It's almost like that. The moment I turned 21 back in February, I was like, yes, adult life. Finally, I'm going to be respected. And every little decision I made really turned into its own karma in some way. Starting up with um, a little short film for class backfired on me, not realizing what it was going to mean to others. Then a little accident. And that's been affecting me a lot. I don't even know how to put it into a way I could say, yeah, this happened and now I'm dealing with the aftermath of it and especially how people are treating me in life nowadays so what else 2023 yep just i think that's it emotional trauma and actually trying to right some wrongs and at least get along with my day it's not too bad to be honest i'm being a bit selfish just by saying oh it sucked i'm blaming myself for my own mistakes when it's more like i feel like there are lessons if i'm being honest with you I keep hearing or saying that you can't blame yourself for the things you do. I mean, I was self-aware in those moments, so technically speaking, I did cause it. But then again, it's like, yeah, I was stupid, but just like in The Lion King, the past will always be there. What you will have to do is learn from it. I'm just waiting for a monkey to hit me with a stick so like that I can actually dodge it the second time and actually feel like I've learned from my past mistake. Not getting hit the first time, but yeah, that's been a big deal with me lately. So far, so good. Uh, 2024, what am I expecting this year? To do better. And hopefully, at least not get into the same issues I have now. But let's not get to 2024 yet. Let's go back to a couple weeks ago. So, my plan originally was to go film back-to-back Nightwalker Part 3 and Part 4 subtitled Silent Nightwalker. And I didn't get to do it. So uh, I that's still in the can for 2024. I want to keep going with this idea. I still have a format that I can actually bring the Nightwalker to life. The only thing now is that since I've been on vacation, I've been back to the drawing board looking at what I've written, the scripts... And especially the layout, knowing I was supposed to release these ahead of time before I left. But now I feel like i got to find a way to actually reschedule. Find a way to actually make these stories make sense. Because um, Part 3, which was supposed to originally release around November of last year. I've been having a hard filming schedule. Especially with the cold and some availability between friends. And while... Doing part three, I came up with a last minute change for part four, which kind of turned into a, let's say, hour long film or an hour long episode of the Night Walker, whatever I'm going to call these little web series thingies. But um, yeah, I didn't have any intentions to actually start filming back to back because, OK, I was like, I wrote the script. I re finished my final draft and school was in the middle of it. So I'm like, OK, I can do this in between classes podcast. <laughs> And I feel like now that I actually had the script ready to go, I was like, okay, let's get ready to film. I got my actors. I know who I want to cast. And let's see if that can fulfill these roles. Okay, I had my boy um, Daniel, a friend of mine from William Patterson. He, I already had his character filled out. I was going to introduce him in part three, but I said, no, let's, let's do something different. Let me add his scenes or his original intentions into, part, into the beginning of part four. Which, that was originally going to be part four as a little mini fight. But I feel like that's just a little filler episode. Like, that's not going to mean anything. Because why set up an episode of me getting back into shape 
only to lose. That makes no sense at all, and it just feels like a cop-out. So what I originally had in mind is, okay, I can actually set this around Christmas. The theme actually incorporates some elements of how around the Christmas time there's some stuff going on in Nork. Not too exaggerated as I wrote in my script, but I wanted to see, okay, who can I cast in these parts? Like, I already had us down and a couple of friends of mine, uh, Zeke, Dell. Maybe I was going to include my friend Charlemagne to at least do some background music because I did ask him if he could try to do a theme for me. But I want to be, like, advising what he's doing for the beat. But we haven't gotten around to that yet. And some podcasting friends. Yeah, I know you guys might be listening or might not, but I'm just saying. It's not too bad to include you guys, but I don't know. Depending on how the schedules go and if you guys are still willing to do it. So let me know. If you can, if not, I'll cast some other people because it's not show friends, it's show business. And I couldn't do it. I already, I got some of the Christmas looking shots like that, the backgrounds and everything could be appearing as if it was Christmas or December. But in this timeline I got going on, I gotta say, okay, it's gonna stick for now. Hopefully whenever I get a, a lot of time and a lot of actual filming, I could actually include those scenes, so like that, the audience has a perception of, oh, so this takes place like around Christmas, and all the logos and everything mean, oh, it's December. Okay, I understand that now, but no, that's not going to work for this one. And I got to say, I am working on a tiny little thing. It's not going to be that too big of a release just yet, because I'm still working out the kinks of doing it, where I GTA 6 came out about a month ago, the trailer for it. And in the middle of my sessions, I had thought about, okay, I'm about to go on vacation in a few weeks. Let me see what else I can get ready to film or what movies I have to check out before I leave. And then I said, wait a minute, you know it would be cool if I do a GTA 6 style trailer in the form of me on my vacation to El Salvador, the homeland. And I'm like, holy fuck, I got to do this now. Yes, that's number one priority when I leave. And I actually got it. I have everything filmed. I was going to release it around January 1st, but I'm still working with somebody to actually get some voice memos and also include some little tiny elements of mine because there's a thing where I'm using my own biography and on my own style of film to actually incorporate stories of my own. Like, I don't even know if it's just me, but I feel like there are some people I know who like lose their heritage. Or in this case, say, oh, I'm this, but I don't acknowledge this other side of me. And I'm like, oh, but that's that doesn't make any sense. It's almost like the way of saying, who are you? What am I? It's not just a way of saying I'm just this, this and this. I also want to keep in mind that that's something I actually want to identify with my characters or whatever in my writing. Who are they? What are they doing? What makes them the way they are? And what experiences do they have that I can actually incorporate into my scripts? Because, excuse me, for part three, I actually thought about casting my friend Daniel first for that role. And then sidetracking him along to continue on in part three. But then I thought, no, that's not going to make any sense. So let me look into somebody else I know. And I kind of auditioned two people in mind. My friend Dell and uh, another friend, Zeke. But I know he he wasn't too big on it at first because he was like, I'm look at me. If I'm being honest, I'm not going to be like comparative to what you're going to do in this. So I'm like, OK, I, that's fair enough. And then I sent the script to my friend Delmar, asked him to read it off. And he gave me some notes on what he would like to do with this character, because I already wrote the character the way it is. I just wrote it as Samaritan. But if I, told, I asked him, if you want to incorporate your own elements, do that. And let me see what I can do in my notes, or if I want to make a rewrite, I'll rewrite into the script. And not too bad. He actually had some marine training at boot camp, and hopefully I said, okay, so that means you're a skilled fighter, right? Yeah, I know how to to work in combat. Okay, so technically speaking, I'm a vigilante, fake-ass superhero, and I want you to try and beat me up. Try, try to do as much military training because you know I'm just average and I got my ass kicked in the last episode so let's see how this goes and for the amount of clips we had I actually like what he did because I'm like okay this seems like a good fight and if I'm 
a note, mental note, the next time I'm going to plan on filming, I need a cameraman. I can't just work and act and actually rehearse lines with just me and my cast. I actually need a cameraman. I don't even know if I'm I'm working on a budget right now because I'm like, I don't have too many things I need to worry about because I got cam. I have my phone, which I used to record the last two. I would get a camera, but finances, I need a lot of money and I don't have too big of a film crew. And if anybody's working around Newark to help me, so if you're listening to this podcast, please let me know. And also, if you want to get involved, there'll be little pay to no pay, but at least we're making art and I can at least help you guys with yours. And I want to say that with ever I'm going to get back into the Nightwalker stuff, I want to see if there's any way I can expand it where I have the character for myself. And I wrote in my friend's character, his, the, I don't even know what his name is. Hold up. Nightwing. No, Nightwing. That's a DC character. Uh, Blackwing. That's what it was called, Blackwing. And I was like, okay, my, my, the Nightwalker, that was unique. I thought of it myself and it actually came out good the way I actually incorporated that character. But then I thought, okay, if I'm going to use this as an expansion piece, I can't think of average ass names. I got to think of something bigger and at least something that could actually make this world seem a bit believable because I know there are a lot of fake superhero things out there or at least some people incorporating into their own fashion. But I feel like if I'm going to do this whole, I'm not even saying cinematic universe or I'm saying universe. If I want to do my own story, I got to actually work out the characters and at least go on with it because at this point... I only have those three things in mind that I actually want to get filmed. Part three, part four, and uh, I think I wanted to I wanted to get this one out before Valentine's Day, but I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work out anytime soon, was a prequel. Not just for me, but also something I kept writing around in the lines like, why did you start doing this? And I kept using the excuse, I don't know. And then I said, why do I keep putting I don't know? Because that's, that's just lazy writing and I'm just using it as an excuse. But I said, no, wait a minute. I can actually use this. Let me develop a new backstory. So I went back to part one and let me see if I mentioned anything. And I didn't exactly give a motive to why. It was just me looking for my actual suit, like my own costume. And also a little mini um, uh, monologue about Stan Lee actually saying... You create your characters out of thin air, and I don't even know what to do. Who else is going to be brave enough to fight, to walk out in the night like that? Actually giving name to the Nightwalker. But with my way, I actually want to incorporate an actual, not origin story, but something like, it doesn't even need to be related to the Nightwalker to be an origin story. It's just like a, a thing. Something tragic that happened in this guy's life, and that's going to be the thing moving forward. And that's all I got from the Nightwalker stuff. And I feel like this is kind of a little prelude to the actual thing I'm going for, which is 2024. And now that I'm actually here, I got to say, this has to work. Whatever I'm doing right now, I want everything to work. Because my first year as an adult, turning 21 sucked. And now that I'm heading towards um, 22 in a month, I got to say, there's a lot I actually want to work driving on for at least I want everything to work out fine I'm not even saying it as a way of saying I keep repeating words but I'm like you know what I mean you get the gist of what I'm saying I don't want to fail this year I actually want to do a lot for myself and for the people around me because I don't even know if I'm on my own in this earth at this point because I feel like there's a lot I can actually do with my projects and actually help my worth and also expo- expand my horizons because I actually want to go forward with the career I want. And also, I'm supposedly graduating this year, technically, if everything works out with, good with that because I don't even know if there's anything I actually want to do after graduation because I know I want to get up to the, up in the big leagues, actually start doing the film thing, but I'm still like down here, down in Newark in my almost apartment, working on something I actually have high expectations for, but I don't even know if it's going to get out there. I do have friends who can actually get in contact with stuff like this, but I don't even know. I feel like I have a lot of responsibilities in the middle of this because 
I'm going in back and forth at work, trying to figure out other ways to make money on the side. And I have a brother who's about to leave in a few months where I'm like, damn, that sucks. And I'm actually starting to feel the little pieces of loss where before I joked about it with him because I'm like, fuck you. I'm not going to miss you. And then I'm like, holy shit, I am. I'm by myself now. Fuck. And it's, it's going to feel different the moment he leaves. I've had some friends do that before and they came back and I'm like, yeah, but I've known you for years and this is going to be like the first time we're actually apart. And I don't even know if I'm going to deal with that as well as I think I am because I'm like, okay, the first few days aren't going to be fine. But then I'm like, you want to go to the movies? You want to go to the mall? Want to get something to eat? And it's just going to be by myself, all by myself up here in this apartment. And I have the dogs, but it's going to hurt not having another, your polar opposite by your side doing this. So I feel like that's going to be a big struggle I'm going to have this year. Not only that, but actually finances, because I actually trying to see what other things I can do in my adult life. Because if I'm being honest, I'm late to the party with this because I'm seeing other friends do a lot of things like I could say three in particular. One I wouldn't say we're friends, friends. I feel like more like acquaintances at this point because I barely hear from him. He's actually doing a lot of good stuff in Newark and actually put his name out there and I can actually appreciate the things they're doing because I was like, okay, I've seen you guys work on this at the lunch table and I got to say good looks. You're actually doing well for yourselves and hopefully this actually goes forward to be a successful career. It is for, for the moment, but... I want to see how far they can actually go with this because I know there's a lot of actual opportunities out there and I hope they actually can keep doing what they're doing. Two other friends of mine, one of them, I see the potential. I like what he's doing and I can actually appreciate the fact that he's actually going through with his art and I know he has the talent for it. He's actually working on his music. Not only that, he's actually checking in on us once in a while just to see what's up and at at least putting himself forward to hang out. He's had some shows going in and out of Jersey. And I got to say, Charlemagne, keep doing what you're doing. I like it. And uh, who else am I thinking of at this point? Oh, yeah, him. Bro, we got to hang out at some point. It sucks the fact that you told me late that you were going to El Salvador. Because if you would have told me that, I would have said, no, come the week I'm leaving. Because, bro, I haven't heard from you in a minute. And I got to say, whatever you're doing. Hopefully I reach up to that potential with you, man. Especially since I'm out with the film thing because I'm writing scripts. Like, I already have ideas in mind on the things I want to do besides the Nightwalker character superhero mode of thing. But, um, I don't know. I'm actually starting to expand my horizons into other stuff. So far, the only thing I'm actually going forward with right now are, like, love stories. I don't know why my single ass is, like, I, I'm, it's too hard to find love in real life. Let me make it up on my own and let's see what happens. And I actually started writing out some stuff inspired by some real true stories of mine. One of them is a real personal one. I'm like, should I even film this? I'm going to keep it to myself. But if I feel like I'm going to have to film this project of mine, I'm like, I want to cast two people in particular to actually make it feel like a little piece of life imitating art, imitating life type of thing. But, um... February happened, and I don't think that's going to happen anytime sooner. I appreciate the fact that I learned from my mistakes, and it took me up until this vacation I had to actually realize this, but it's like everything you've held on to the past, you got to learn to let go. And I don't let go of things often because I want things to stay in their own little bubble. I don't like change. Especially when I feel like it's going to affect me at some point. Because the thing I can actually learn from this experience is that everybody is not there for you 24-7. Some people might be there for the moment, but then again, later on in life, you never know. One little incident could change a lot. And you got to be aware that that same person is that same person you knew is not the same person you knew when you were around at the time. Trust me. I know a couple of people who weren't who they said they were, and 
it's up until now where they change it up just because, oh, I know you from back in the day when before these people never talked to me before and now they want to act fake and different because they're like, oh, I see you're doing good. How can I change that? And that's going to be the way moving forward with them. I don't even know if they're actually doing something with their lives, but if I'm being honest, I learned and another friend of mine actually talked about this too, where like, we're doing this, we have our own motives going, I'm here at work, you're trying to do your own thing with the YouTube channel and at least trying to get into film, and what are they doing with their lives? Nothing. Just posing, Instagramming. And if you think about it, nothing they do is going to affect you in the ways that it's going to motivate your life and your career because you could be up and you could be up doing your thing and they'll just not even notice. I even joked around saying it's going to be like that um Creed 3 Michael B Jordan thing that you remember that um back when Creed 3 came out, the um, there was this um one girl who came up at Michael B Jordan like uh I'm in an interview with Michael B Jordan. And we knew each other from Newark. Oh, the corner kid, right? And she was like, no, no, no. We just made fun of the name. I'm like, people were kind of being like, oh, why is Michael B. Jordan holding on to the bass being petty? But I'm like, hell no. There are people like that who actually look down upon you and the stuff you feel like you want to do. And once you're doing good and they're not as big as you, you feel like the little pettiness of, yeah, remember all that shit you suffered back in the day? Look at me now. And I like my little pieces of revenge once in a while, but I don't know. I feel like closure is the thing I actually need with some of those people. Or at least one last send-off or goodbye for measure because, yeah, some things could have ended off badly. But I actually want to at least say, I'm sorry, either I could have done better or, yeah, that was a part of what I felt in the past that I couldn't say but now that I'm here with you right now, I want to say I'm sorry, and I have to let you go. Couldn't let go to some people for years, and especially with my love life. That's going to be one... No, 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 I'm not going to talk about that one here. Yeah, all that's going to be in its own separate episode, so I feel like now that I'm going to go back into that topic, I'm like, okay, let's deep dive down into the dark side of me, because... E, that whole thing is tragic from the looks of it because I feel like there's a lot I can include in one episode about love so I feel like the next time I do this that's going to be the episode so with this whole thing what was I going back on let me get back to what I was doing uh, I'm taking notes from these guys topic list sounds like a dumbass name so Mickey Mouse is in public domain now I actually mentioned this in a video um, I'm doing for the channel and I feel like I got to recap it here because it's kind of funny that I remember when um, the whole a year, yeah a year ago Winnie the Pooh went public domain and people were quick enough to make a horror movie out of the Winnie the Pooh characters and a year ago or should I say a year later Mickey Mouse is finally public domain but not Mickey Mouse Mickey Mouse more like um, Steamboat Willie and I mentioned this in a trailer reaction and also discussion in my actual videos for this on the YouTube channel where it's kind of funny how people expected this to happen and once it happened people were like oh so basic horror and you couldn't wait until January 2nd for all this to be released and it's kind of funny because I wasn't even notified of all this until when I got back in Jersey because um, I was on a plane I flew Valeris which I was stuck on a plane for six hours with no Wi-Fi and as soon as I landed in Jersey, I'm like, okay, let's see what's all the topics I can talk about. Okay, save this to the playlist, save this for the topic. Okay, I'm doing a video on this. And wait, what? And I saw the stuff. I saw the horror movie um, posters. I saw the video game that they're making. I'm like, what is going on? Are people that quick? And I was like, wow. A Mickey Mouse horror movie. I'm finally in public domain. Huh. I'll give my pitch for it. Fuck it. And I thought about an actual idea for a Mickey Mouse horror movie. But knowing all these guys and the budgets they have, they're not as creative as I think because I've seen what they do with Winnie the Pooh. I saw what they did with the Grinch. And 
interesting ideas, but mostly I don't see it actually filling up for its premise because the Grinch actually could have done it, but it was a Christmas parody. Winnie the Pooh, they went low budget and used actual animal mask, and it, the characters didn't look like actual characters. They look like people wearing a Winnie the Pooh and piglet mask, or should I say pig mask, which is saw, but technically not saw, but you know what I mean. They were they looked like the characters, but they weren't exactly the characters. And I was like, okay, with this Mickey Mouse one, I'm like, this looks like a whole fake ass Five Nights at Freddy's or whatever slasher thing they're trying to do. But I wrote on my Instagram story a while ago for here's my pitch for a Mickey Mouse horror movie where if I were writing this, I would set it on Disneyland and make it a, a type of universal reality where Groups of people are invited to the park Willy Wonka style. Like, okay, a select a few get to see the park or are invited onto the island. And the island itself is the studio. Like, Disneyland is a studio where people will actually call it the happiest place on earth. But the studio kidnaps people or the people who get onto the island. And it makes movies out of them. Like, some type of thing where they're... The, the people who come onto the island are the stereotypes and characters in all of our Disney movies of today from let's kind of I think Snow White first I think it was Snow White from Snow White up until Wish every little piece of media from Disney has come from all these people and every single soul inhabits the characters in all of the Disney movies today and the plot would be that the latest group arrives where this is going on for years and multiple people don't even notice the victims are like oh people are invited to this island so hopefully they're gonna make it out and nobody pays mind because as soon as somebody gets word of some of the characters are looking like their friends and family they're like something is off about this and they're invited onto the island where they started seeing all the suspicions as coming true and some of the missing victims that they believe look like their friends look like the characters in the movies and something is going wrong in the Disney Matrix where something is causing the characters to go haywire and they're actually on their way to kill the guest based off whatever type of character they are and whatever style of animation they are. So it would be like a mix of um, either Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I guess, and a bit of something. A, I think of, um, what's that movie called with the, with the desert and the motorcycles? Oh, Ride with the Devil, like a mix of Roger Rabbit and Ride with the Devil, where you're getting all the, the cults of the actual Disney characters forming into one coming after the crew, and they're going to actually go into the to the actual Disney park and actually kidnap these people or at least kill them. So like that, they'll be transformed into the way of the mouse. And I feel like since Disney take, has owning everybody, I feel like it's going to be like an invasion of the body snatchers type of scenario. But, um, yeah, that's my pitch. I know nobody's going to buy it. Nobody's going to be listening to this. But just want to put that out there. At least it's more creative than the one they got right now, which I don't even know when that's coming out. But I feel like I got to check this out because it looks corny. But I'm like, let's see how bad this is because this can't be as bad as the Winnie the Pooh one. And we're getting a sequel next month. So hopefully I'm going to talk about that on the channel. And what else? 2024. What are my expectations? Is that the, the, re the revolving thing about this episode now? The, what am I expecting? It's better to set the table for today knowing there's going to be a tomorrow. Because I don't even want to say I'm expecting to do better. Everybody says it every year. I even said it myself on a few occasions. But there's a lot I want to say that could actually be impactful for me. Where I'm in a state of... I'm just egotistical. I want to stop that about myself. I feel like I'm the bit. I should be like the main character in my story, which I kind of am, but I'm putting myself first before everybody else. And that's selfish at this point, because I feel like now that I'm actually going into this mature state where there's a lot of things and adult responsibilities I have to handle because I'm not even fulfilling in myself and I'm just struggling. I'm basically Peter Parker, except without the Mary Jane or the powers or the be or the lizard people or the monsters or the anything whatever is in my way. I'm just trying to live day to day out doing my thing 
and at least have some fun along the line. So 2024, what I can say to you is expect the unexpected because you never know what opportunities are among the path. And hopefully a lot of things end up well. I'm expecting resolutions to new to old relationships and hopefully introductions to new ones. It gets lonely out here in Newark sometimes. And I feel like now that we're back into the world again and now it's a whole new year, a whole new story. Let's see what season 22 could bring this upcoming February because I don't even know if I'm ready to finish off 21 with a bang, which hopefully enough, it doesn't end up with a bang, literally, where I got to say it can't be as bad as last year. That's all I'm going to say. And it gets... This is where it ends off. This is my beginning back into the Oh Dear podcast. Thank you guys for listening. And hopefully you'll be able to hear this alongside the Oh Review channel. And all I can say is see you next time. Bye, guys.